In this tutorial, I will explain how a WearAM handles access control and data protection. Access control and data protection are, imp are implemented by two mechanisms in a WearAM, called access levels and protection rules. Let's talk about access levels first. Access levels roughly correspond to user roles. For each access level or role, you can define access restrictions. That is, you can limit access to business objects, attributes, queries, processes, and other elements in a WearIM. By default, a WearIM creates two access levels, administrator and guest. But you can add as many access levels as you like. The administrator access level has no restrictions by default. It can access any elements in the system. We will talk about the guest access level a little later in, in this tutorial. Let's look at an example of access levels. Let's recall our banking application that manages customers and their accounts. The account object has the state attribute. Let's assume that in our application we will have three access levels besides guest, the administrator, operator and customer. Administrators should be able to access and change anything they like. Operators will only have a read-only access to the state attribute and customers will have no access to this attribute at all. They will not even see this attribute. So let's define the operator and customer access levels. So I create a new access level, give it a name, operator, and then I have to select an element for which I will define my access restrictions. Since we need to define access restrictions to the state attribute of the account business object, I expand business objects, then I expand account, and then I select the state attribute. Now I click on the cell in the access column, and I can see that several choices are available. We are only interested in the full access, read-only, and not available values. The other two have been superseded by the protection rules. We will ignore them. Operators will have read-only access to the state attribute, so we select read-only. Let's now define the custom access level. This time, we select not available from the list of choices. Now we need to log into the system as users with different access levels and test how this works. I will explain the login process in the where I am in more detail now. There is a special business object group in a where I am called system user. When a user logs into an AwareIM system, AwareIM searches the database for instances of any business object that is a member of the system user group, and then checks the values of the credentials. When it finds an instance that matches the entered credentials, this instance is considered to be the logged in user. This means that a business object that represents a user must be a member of the system user group and must have certain attributes defined, such as login name and password. By default, a WearIM creates such business object automatically. It is called the regular user and it is a member of the system user group. It has a number of predefined attributes 
login name, password, and a few others. In fact, all members of the system user group must have these attributes defined. When you add a member to this group, a VRAM will automatically add the required attributes. The attribute that we are particularly interested in is access level. The value of this attribute defines the access level of the logged in user. When a VRAM finds a match of credentials, it looks at the value of the access level attribute of the matched instance and considers it to be the access level of the user. So the value of this attribute is very important. You can see that our regular user object has the initial value of administrator for this attribute. When the system is first initialized, a single instance of the administrator is created. This is the instance that initially has admin and password credentials. The administrator can create other regular user instances and set the value of its access level explicitly. So let's do just this. Log in as administrator and create an operator for our system. Before we can test the application though, we need to make sure that we have visual perspectives for each access level defined. For more details about visual perspectives, please watch the visual perspectives tutorial. In our application, I will have the same visual perspective for all access levels. Now we can test the system. So I log in as administrator using default credentials admin and password. And now I can create a new instance of the regular user object. As you can see, ORM automatically sets up a combo box with all available access levels in our system. I will create a user with the name John and password John and select an operator as the access level of this user. Let's now log out and log in as this user. You can see now I'm specifying John as the login name. And now I should be logged in as operator. Let's try to create a, an account object. When I, where I am displays the form of this object, I can see that the state attribute is disabled. I can change the balance attribute, but I cannot change the state attribute. Let's now look at the customer access level. We already have the object representing the customer. We want this object to log into the system with the customer access level, not the regular user object. All we have to do to support this is add our custom object to the system user business object group. Note that as soon as I do this, a VRAM automatically adds a number of required attributes to the custom object, including login name, password, and access level. We want all customers to have the custom access level. So we set the initial value of the access level attribute to customer.
We don't want anyone to be able to change this access level, so we need to make sure that the access level attribute is not present on the form of the customer. We will also remove some other unnecessary attributes. But we will leave the login name and password attributes there because administrators need to specify the login name and password. Let's now log in as administrators and create a customer instance. So we log in again. and create a new customer. We do not have to specify access level explicitly. because it was set by the initial value. Let's now log out and log in as this customer. Now I am logged in as a customer. When I create a new account, I can see that the uh, state attribute is not even on the form. And where I am has automatically removed it. Now a few words about the guest access level. The guest access level represents users that do not need to log into the system. There is a special URL that allows access to the system by guests without having to log in. By default, this access level has no access to anything, so guests cannot do much. If you want your application to support guest access level, you need to allow access to those elements of the system that you want guests to see. Although powerful, access levels have limitations. Using access levels, it is not possible to specify access restrictions based on, on attribute values. For example, if we wanted our customers with big account balances to have access to more attributes than customers with smaller balances, we wouldn't be able to do this with access levels alone. Restricting access based on attribute values can be achieved by protection rules. Protection rules are business rules that use the protect or read protect actions. For more details about business rules, please watch the business rules tutorial. The protect action allows read only access to business objects or attributes. The user can see but not modify objects or attributes. The read protect action disallows any access to an object or attribute and makes it invisible in the system. The advantage of using these rules compared to access levels is that you can specify conditions of protection. Only when the condition holds will the object or attribute be protected. Another advantage is that when an object or attribute is read protected, a WRAM will not only automatically remove it from all forms, but it will also automatically remove it from all query results. In a way, the protection rules work as an additional filter in the system. With a single protection rule, you can achieve really dramatic results. And of course, being business object rules, you have to attach protection rules to some business object, the one access to which you are limiting. Let's look at an example. In our banking system, we now allow customers to log in. Let's assume that each customer belongs to a particular region. 
I have added the region attribute to the customer object. We will allow customers to look at the details of other customers, but only if other customers belong to the same region as the logged in customer. Also, we will not allow customers to change details of other customers, only their own. We can achieve this by adding two simple protection rules. The first protection rule will protect the entire customer if the customer being viewed is different from the logged in customer. Obviously the protection rule will be attached to the customer object. I will just paste the text of the rule here. This rule will protect all attributes of the customer business object from users that belong to the customer access level. The syntax of the protect action allows you to explicitly specify access levels of the users for which protection will apply. In this case, the from clause indicates that the rule is only relevant for the customer access level. Let's now add another rule that checks regions. Again, I will just paste the text of the rule. So if the regions are different, we will not allow customers to see other customers at all. We have allowed customers to see details of other customers, but we do not want them to see other people's balances. So let's add a rule to the account object that will protect its balance if the owner of the account is different from the logged in customer. The rule will look like this. If owner of the account is different from the logged in customer, then read protect the balance from customer. In this tutorial, I have shown how AwareAM implements access control and data protection. For more details, please refer to the user guide.